when Martin Luther King was assassinated, my father was pacing back and forth, and he was emotional. I'd never seen him like that. So I ran back to my mother, and I said, Daddy's in there crying. Daddy's in there crying. And she's like, it's okay, baby. Give him some time. That was only nine months before your father himself was killed in the same way. Now, he was a really busy civil rights leader, so he wasn't home all that much. Right. But your father spent his last day with you. He played snowballs with you and mm -hmm. took you on your little sled and spent that whole day with you. I remember I heard my mother cry, Edwin. And I sat up in the bed and I was immediately engulfed in fear. My mom and I rushed over there, and when I saw that front door was open, I knew, I knew. I'll never forget walking into that family room, and I could see your dad laying there, and of mm -hmm. course he was totally still. He died instantly. Then you came and got me, and I knew everything was going to be all right. You guys never lived again in your house. After his death, I was always frightened that whoever that was might try to come get us. She didn't really talk to me about him. If I brought him up, it would make her sad. She kept a photo album with all of the pictures of the assassination, and the, mm -hmm. so I learned about him, basically reading that. I wish she'd been able to talk to you about him, though. Me too. About his sense of humor, his astonishing singing voice. Right. And he was somebody who was quiet but had all the power in the room. I get sad, but I don't stay in that frame of mind because my parents didn't stay here long, but while they were here, they did everything humanly possible to make this a better world before they left it. That's right. 